I know what you're thinking. Seriously, budget lawns? 22? It's not as many as you think. Yeah, that's right. 22 is not as many as you think because I promise you if you follow everything else you hear here on YouTube, it would be more like 52 or 72 or 102 things that you should put on your priority list to do in the lawn in 2022. Thank you for joining me. Let's get right to it because yes, we do have 22, but trust me, I am not going to waste your time. I was sitting around the other day thinking, what are all the things that I need to do in my lawn, especially if it were established? I've got a new lawn, so I won't do all of these things this year. But if you have an established lawn, these are the essential lawn tips that you should not miss. There are a lot of other things out there, certainly, that you could do. But these are the ones that I feel like should be on your to-do list every single season. This is what I have always done. It has never failed me in the past. So if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Here we go. Number one, mow twice a week. It's that simple. You're probably not mowing enough. Mow twice a week, not once a week, not once every two weeks, twice a week. Get one inch of water a week. That's number two. That's all you need, one inch of water a week. Tip number three. How do you know when you're gonna get one inch of water a week? Well, you need to be able to measure it. You can either do that with a tuna can or go out and buy a simple, cheap rain gauge to monitor how much of the free stuff you're getting. Number four, fertilize at least twice a year. Yes, you can fertilize four times, five times. You can spoon feed, you can do all these other things, but you should at least be throwing down some fertilizer twice a year. That's number four. Number five, mulch instead of bagging your clippings. When you mulch the clippings, you put them back into the lawn and that's free fertilizer. So if you do that all season long, that kind of adds another fertilization to your two that you're already going to do. Number six, this is for us Bermuda folks. If you have a Bermuda lawn, scalp it twice. Once in the spring to help it wake up, and a second time around mid-season in the summer to reset your height of cut and kind of start fresh again. Number seven, apply a pre-emergent in the spring and then again in the fall. Keep it simple, folks. Two applications will go a long way. Number eight, pull weeds when you see them. You don't always have to use a post-emergent herbicide. Get your little fingers, get down there and pull them, and get them out of the lawn before they come a problem. Now, if you do have a really bad weed problem, well, that's the point when you probably wanna do a broadcast treatment of a post-emergent herbicide, or at least spot spray the really bad parts. So, that would be number nine. Use a post-emergent herbicide to kill weeds if they're really starting to take over areas of your lawn. Number 10. Unfortunately, this one goes overlooked far too often. Sharpen your mower blade at least once this year. A sharp mower blade is so crucial to having a healthy lawn. You don't want to skip that step. That's number 10. Number 11, dress up your boring lawn with some annuals or some perennial plants. Come on, the grass can't be the only star of the show. You need something to liven it up a little bit. Some color goes a long way, and not to mention, if your grass is not up to snuff, then uh, your plants will help uh, distract from that just a little bit. All right, so we're halfway. Let's keep on going. If you plant those annuals and perennials, then guess what you should do for number 12? You should mulch your flower beds. I like to use a brown russet cedar. The cedar is supposedly good for helping keep mosquitoes away, and down here in the south, we have a problem with those. So mulch your flower beds. Number 13, this was just a fun one. Let your kids play in the sprinklers. They have a blast and you get the lawn watered. It's a win-win for everybody. Number 14, I know this one's gonna be hard to do sometimes, but don't sweat the small stuff, my friends. 
These are not problems, they are projects. Look at everything that's thrown at you, all the curveballs you're gonna face as something else to work on, something else to accomplish. I don't mind when things go wrong, it keeps me occupied. Number 15, level your lawn. Now, I am not saying that you need to do a complete level of the entire thing, but you should at least take care of some of those bumpier spots, your trouble spots. Because you don't always have to have a level lawn just to get like a nice smooth surface to real mow really low. But I can tell you one thing, a smoother lawn is not only beneficial for mowing low, but it's also just a little bit more enjoyable than pushing a lawnmower, a lawnmower across a bumpy yard. All right, number 16, trim and edge every other mow. I used to do it every time I mowed, I would trim an edge, and that just becomes too much. But then on the flip side of that, you can never do it, and then it just looks scraggly. It's like having, you know, hair on your neck and around your ears and not going to get a haircut. Try to trim an edge every other time you mow. It really will sharpen things up a bit, and you'll be glad you do it. Number 17, this one you should do every time, though. Blow off your driveway, your sidewalk, your porch, your patios, every single time you mow. Don't skip that step, folks. I mean, why would you like do all that work to make everything look nice in the lawn and then leave all the clippings all over the place? Blow those things back in the lawn, not in the street. And uh, it's just a simple step that you should not skip. Number 18, here's one, and I haven't done it yet because we're in the new house. I'm waiting on the temperatures to warm up so I can actually get out in the garage and enjoy it. But organize your garage, I promise you. If you're like me, organization just makes you feel better and more uh, balanced. Not to mention, it's easier to get your things out of the garage and find things when you need them, and that saves time. And here on Budget Loans, we're trying to save time and money. Number 19, get your hoses hung up. You don't have to have a nice fancy reel or roll. I get the cheap plastic ones, put them on the side of my fence, hang them up, get them out of the flower beds, get them out of the lawn. They just look nasty laying all over the place. I mean, if you really want your grass to stand out, you don't need other things to be a distraction. And that goes on to number 20. Get all the other junk up out of your yard. If you have junk laying around, cinder blocks, bricks, trash, buckets, whatever it may be, I'm telling you, you're just taking away from the curb appeal that you're trying to accomplish. So anything you can get out of the way will just make your home look even better. After the trash and recycling is picked up in the morning, pull your trash and recycle bins in. You don't need those sitting around blocking the view of all the hard work you've put into your grass. Number 20, one, take pictures of your progress. You know, I always thought, why am I doing this? But when I get to see where I've been and where I've gone, it really is a motivator to keep working hard because sometimes we can get a little bit discouraged or we can get a little burned out. But when you see those pictures of your progress, it makes you feel good about what you've accomplished. And naturally, you kind of want to accomplish even more. Number 22, it may be the last tip, but it could possibly be one of the most important. Don't compete with or compare your lawn to anyone else but yourself. Focus on what you're trying to accomplish, what your goals are, and then you will succeed on what you want and not what somebody else wants, and you will feel much better about that in the end, because trust me, if you start looking at everybody else's stuff, it can make it a little bit distracting to accomplish your goals based off of your time, your money, your effort, and what you have available to put into it. All right, my friends, 22 tips for you to accomplish in the lawn in 2022. Yes, I know there are gonna be a lot on here that um, you're gonna say, wow, he didn't mention a soil test. He didn't mention a pre-scalp. He didn't mention all these other things other people are talking about. Well, guess what? I am just a regular dude. I am just a father, a full-time worker, probably a lot like a lot of you. And these are the ones that I have found have worked in the past and there is no reason for me to do anything else because if it ain't broke, 
ain't gonna fix it. All right, my friends, that's all we've got for you here today on Budget Lawns. I appreciate you joining me as always, and we will see you next time.